welcome back to my creative space. Well, as you know, in my last episode, I've dismantled the uh, old studio upstairs uh, in my living room, and we're down into the garage now, uh, building a new space underneath. So uh, this is going to be great. I'm really excited to show you the build. Uh, I've got to get a wall build across here, uh, benches behind me, you name it. I will get to showing you the plan of what I'm going to do there. But uh, today, I just want to show you a little bit of painting, actually. So today, I'm going to show you how to paint a copper pot. You've actually arrived on week one of my new vlog series. So every week, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, I'll actually uh, release a video on just the week, week's event. So hopefully, it'll be a lot about building this uh, space behind me here and, and making it look a lot prettier than what it is now. Okay, so each week I'm really excited to bring you one of these videos. However, I really need you guys actually, I need you to subscribe along and, and make it more enjoyable. You know, join this uh, journey with me. Uh, I'd be really, really pleased to have you. And you know, if you like this video, hit that like button and uh, please leave a comment down below. Anything you see, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, so look, I look forward to uh, having you come along for a ride. Before I jump straight into the painting, I just want to explain what this actual episode is about. Uh, this is about setting yourself a time limit, actually. So this little guy here, timer, uh, this has probably been one of the biggest uh, improvements to my painting is actually setting a time limit on your painting. Now, I only do really do this for practice, so um, if I'm doing little studies and that, look, in this episode, I set a one hour timer basically, and this is really just to improve your color mixing, just to get the color absolutely perfect as soon as you place it down, rather than, you know, taking forever to slowly build up to that right color, you know, uh, it really does improve your painting, it just happens faster, helps your paint looser, and I think it's a, it's a great uh, tool to have in your in your kit bag. Let's get to it. Let's uh, jump into the painting. Okay, so I start by dividing this canvas up into thirds and I want the copper pot to literally be right in the centre of the right third of the canvas. So to measure this out on the canvas and get it looking, you know, proportionally correct, I'm sitting equal distances from the copper pot to my canvas. So basically I will hold my arm arm's length with a ruler and literally mark out the whole width of the copper pot, the height of the copper pot, uh, height of the handle, etc. Uh, you'll see here how I do that. I'm just literally holding it arm's length, eyeing it up with the measurement stick and then sort of coming across the canvas and marking that out.
I'm just doing the basic proportions here. Uh, I'm not going to divide literally everything up on this, but just the height of the handle, the width of the handle, just really the main, the main points to size this up. Now it's important to take your time here, you don't want to rush this stage, you want to have it look good on the canvas and once you've got it looking good on the canvas, you know, then you'll be happy with the result I think. If you get it the wrong size and you're not happy the way it looks in this stage, just change it, you know, get it the right size first. Okay, so it's time to break out those oil paints and I'm just using Michael Harding oil paints here and I'm using Liquid Original just so it dries a little bit faster. Now it's always important to start your painting your background. Uh, and to do this we paint the darks first, so I'm really just painting all the shadows I see in this cloth in the background. Now as you saw in the start of this, I set a one hour timer that's sitting right in front of me here. And I'm trying not to get bogged, too bogged down. I don't want to paint every intricate fold in this cloth. But I'm trying to make it look a bit like cloth basically. It takes it usually takes a long time to get this right. Okay, so you really need to trust your eye when you do this. Uh, trying to place the darks exactly where I see the darks. I'm not trying to um, too too much blending at the moment. Um, and it looks a bit weird basically but you've just got to you know trust it in the end you'll, you'll get it all looking correct Okay, so trying to fit into this one hour time frame, I've really just got to mix the exact colour I need in the exact spot on the canvas. So if that colour is slightly different, shade of blue in that area, I'll mix that up. Now as you can see here with this timer, I'm already 38 minutes into this and I've literally only got a quarter of this background done. So. Yeah, look, I've got to get on the hop and I'm spending way too much time on this background trying to get every little fold, every little crease painted in there. So I think at this point I've realized, look, I've just got to get motoring now. Okay, so the time is down to 29 minutes, so it's really moving fast and so do I, I have to, I have to get moving, get this background in. 
So I literally just start making big sweeping motions and trying to get this done. Now, I'm just as you can see the handle there, it's poking up into this background. I'm trying to paint around that. I don't want to paint any of the pot at all at the moment. Okay, so we're 25 minutes in and I just can't leave that background alone at the top there. I didn't like it, it looked too distracting, so I've just sort of blending it out a little bit there. Okay, so 40 minutes into this painting and I still haven't finished this background literally only got 20 minutes left to finish this painting and I'm starting to feel the pressure actually and I probably won't get this done okay so before you guys are not off to sleep there watching me paint what I'll do is I'll just take you over to the workshop and show you the plans of uh, this studio space so uh, let's go okay so what we have here for my studio space so our garage door is here, so that's the door. Now studio space is this room here. It's quite long, it's probably about five metres long, so it's quite quite a nice size room. Now there's already this wall here, the separating wall. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a wall along here it'll have a doorway in it close to this end it's not very wide so the door will swing over against this wall we have the sink in the corner and a workbench all the way along here now the window is here which you saw when i was sitting at my stool i'm in front of that window but it's quite long so you can't see each end of the studio from where i'm sitting there and so I'm going to have a heap of shelves here, shelves here, and this whole wall here, I'm going to have like a wall easel. So basically all my strips of, uh, of timber will be on the wall here, and I'll paint along this whole wall. So that's probably going to be 3.6 metres long. So I'll be able to, you know, have a few paint, paintings on the go, especially doing oil paintings, you need to have a few on the go. So not a big heap of room to step back and look, probably only two metres to step back, just in this little gap here, I'll leave a gap here. Um, but it's going to be a nice studio, and I'm going to have a coffee machine here because I love my coffee. A um, couple of stools under here, under the bench, you know, you can look out this window. I've got a nice view down the river, the Tasman Bridge, so you can look out there and get some inspiration. Next door, this way from that end wall, so to the right of where I was sitting. We've got a nice bathroom going in here. So now there always was a toilet here on this wall. Uh, on this wall is going to be a vanity unit. Nice vanity unit here. And a shower up here. Now this room is quite difficult. I've got some concrete sloping floor which sort of slopes up. Slopes up, up this way. And uh, well it's quite hard to dig all that out so i'm stepping this floor up through the middle so there'll be a step through the middle of the bathroom a split level bathroom floor fine that's not a problem and i'm finishing uh, completing the wall we're going all the way around to the other side of the garage now this garage is about six meters wide so it's already walled at the front half the garage so i'm actually just blocking off all this dirt and all my uh, tools and workshop are going to be behind this wall uh, all, all my platforms are up the back. I think I've shown you in the last episode. I've given you a sneak peek of around at my my garage area, and all this is under, underneath. Really diving into this uh, bathroom at the moment, and I'll just quickly show you a uh, sneak peek of that now.
So 17 minutes left and I've started on this felt placemat. Uh, I've really got to get moving. Okay, so I've got 14 minutes left and I've almost done this placemat and it's time to move on to that copper pot shortly. Okay, it's the same principle for the pot, just punching in those darks first and trying to mix the exact colour I need in the exact place. I really don't have time now to mess around. I'm thinking I'm going to blow that time limit, but let's see how we go. Now there's no real secret to painting metallics or shiny objects, it's literally just placing the exact same colour in the exact same place that you see with your own eye. So just mix that up, take time to mix it up properly and just put it on the canvas. Also what helps is directional brush strokes. So the base I might brush horizontally in the, in the direction of the pot same with uh, the sides of the pot, I'm, I'm curving those brush strokes down to try and make it look like it's a, a round object. So the brushes I'm using for this is a number four filbert and a number four dagger, flat dagger. These help me make the marks I need in the required areas. The dagger I'll use for little thin striping with the handle etc and the fill that I'll use for 99% you know, of the rest of the painting. Okay, so I hope you've made it this far. I just want to take you over to Belle Reve Marina actually and give you a view of that. This is looking from the Rosny side back across to that Belle Reve Marina. Beautiful spot. Uh, There's quite some dark clouds coming over in the background. I think it just poured with rain about 10 minutes after I shot this. So, you know, check this out. Okay, so it was at this point that the timer actually went off. Uh, actually not completed this in the time limit. But what that did achieve, the, the setting the timer, is really just to get me thinking more about mixing those perfect colours and speeding up my brush strokes, not being so tight, so detailed, and trying just to throw the right colour in the right spot on the painting and just moving on. It's taught me quite a bit, so I think it'll help you out too if you grab yourself a timer, you know, give it a go in the next little study you do. It really will help.
Okay, so since I broke that timer, uh, I'm starting to lay over colours now and just play a little bit more of the detail of this pot. Not over the top because it would ruin the look of the whole painting now if I do that, but just in certain areas I'm just trying to just refine it a bit better. Okay, as this is nearing to the end, I'm just refining the handles here, just trying to get those lines right, get the shine right in the right spots. Now as you can see here with the close up to this pot, it's pretty ugly up close but when you stand back it sort of works and that's how you want your pain to be. week one I'm exhausted I don't know about you um, hope you enjoyed that painting though uh, and it look remember to set a timer every now and then it, it really does improve your color mixing so I highly recommend that and look I need you guys as I said earlier in the video I need you guys to jump on board hit that subscribe button and if you like this video give it whatever that one is a thumbs up and uh, you know we'll see you in the next one so see you then